Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, it's the week of Saul Alvarez's fight against Arislandi Lara. Now let's just take a step back and look at the bigger picture and just talk about a structural bias in life. Right? What I'm going to say obviously is my own opinion. You have yours. I'm just sharing a perspective here. You know, I think it's easier in life to be a yes man than it is a no man. Right? We'll call people who are no men whistleblowers right now understand when you're a yes man you often get to keep your job right especially when the person you're saying yes to is a rock star right someone who generates a lot of money for the profession or sport like Saul Alvarez does, right? We'll call Saul Alvarez Canelo, right? Understand, Saul Alvarez is a rock star. He's the cash cow in this fight. He's one of the few guys in the sport who generates excitement and brings in a lot of fans who don't root for other fighters. Right? Understand too, Canelo has the kind of game that on film leads to very film friendly highlights. Right? Canelo has some great knockouts. His punches have snap on them. When he stops an Alfredo Angulo or a Jose Cito Lopez, it looks good. It looks dramatic. What's not to like? Also, he's fighting real opponents, right? He's already fought Shane Mosley. He's already fought Austin Trout. He's already fought Floyd Mayweather. So you're talking about a good-looking guy with a visually exciting film friendly game who is fighting real opponents and who has the kind of image that you can market right corporate sponsors love Canelo because he's exactly the kind of guy they're looking for right what better person to associate your product with than a guy who's fighting real opponents, who is doing so in dramatic fashion, right? And who, you know, seems to be living a clean, youngster friendly lifestyle. Okay, great. Right? But let me be a whistleblower here. Understand, just like there are bubbles in the stock market just like there are bubbles in the real estate market there are bubbles in opinion right I think public opinion right now on Canelo is a bubble right this isn't a beauty contest it's the sport of boxing right somewhere along the line People seem to have lost track of the fact that Saul Alvarez doesn't have the hand speed of Arislandi Lara. Saul Alvarez doesn't have the tempo of Arislandi Lara. Let's coin a phrase here. A lot of boxing deals with timing 
right? Timing, balance, being ready to seize opportunities, right? Saul Alvarez isn't able to take advantage of the gaps in fights, timing-wise, that Arislandi Lara is, right? If Lara sees an opening, I believe he can get there faster than, than Saul Alvarez, right? Also, there's a part of the game that involves the lower half of your body, below the waist, right? Saul Alvarez doesn't have the foot speed that Arislandi Lara does. He just doesn't. It's a mistake to look at Lara's fight against Alfredo Angulo and to reach the conclusion that Lara can be walked down. Okay, maybe there are parts of that fight where Angulo is walking down Lara. But understand, boxing is rock, paper, scissors. I understand that Canelo beat Angulo. Right? Got the TKO. But Saul Alvarez does not have the foot speed of Alfredo Angulo. Right? Nor does he run the red lights that Alfredo Angulo runs. Understand, Saul Alvarez, at least in my opinion, is lower volume than Alfredo Angulo. Angulo is the kind of guy who will come in on a technician like Lara whose goal in life is to hit you with clean, crisp counters. Right, and he'll overwhelm a technician like Lara with volume. Right, and because he's running red lights, he'll take the punches with his face. He'll catch Lara's punches on his face. The idea is that the punches he's landing are heavier than the punches you're landing. So he's prepared to get shot in a gunfight as long as he's also shooting you. That's Angulo's game. That's not Saul Alvarez's game. Saul Alvarez is lower volume. He's lower volume like Arislandi Lara. Right? So this isn't the Paul Williams fight. Lara versus Paul Williams. This isn't the Lara versus Alfredo Angulo fight. This is Lara in the ring with a guy who's lower volume just like he is, who isn't the athlete he is, who doesn't have the timing he does, and who doesn't have the lateral movement that he has. So I'm expecting boxing-wise, not punching-wise, because as I've said, Canelo's one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport. But boxing-wise, I'm expecting a mismatch. I'm expecting Lara to win several rounds just on boxing ability. Just on boxing ability, I'm expecting Lara to jump out to a huge lead in this fight. Saul Alvarez, to me, literally only has a puncher's chance. Now look at the opinion bubble here. Somehow the better fighter, Lara, is the underdog. He's a plus 140 right now. Right? Understand, the casinos are in the opinion business. They're setting the odds based not on what they believe is going to happen in the event. Rather, they're setting the odds based on how they believe the public is going to bet on the fight. Right? The casinos know 
And I know no one's going to say this publicly because Alvarez is a rock star. But the casinos know that people are a bit too excited about Alvarez. Right? The casinos know that they can charge you a premium for betting on Saul Alvarez. Saul Alvarez shouldn't be getting this premium. Right? Maybe in the world of marketing, he's much better than Lara. But this video is not on marketing potential. This video is actually on what happens in the ring. Right? And in the ring, I think Lara's the better fighter. I think what we're going to see is that Saul Alvarez has a hard time landing his jab on Lara. Without his jab landing, I think we're going to find out that Saul Alvarez has a hard time with timing in general. What we're going to learn is what we already know from the Floyd Mayweather fight, which is that there were times in the ring where Saul Alvarez is a lost puppy. He can't land on the other guy. He doesn't have the foot speed to cut off the ring on the other guy. Right? So he's just in limbo and he doesn't have the defensive skills to get close and continue to pressure the other fighter without getting hit like let's say a Juan Manuel Marquez in the later rounds. In fact, take a hard look at his record. Let's just look at the last four fights. Four fights ago, Saul Alvarez fought Jose Cito Lopez. Now close your eyes for a second and ask yourself, what weight class is Lopez? Right? The fight took place at 154 pounds. Was Jose Cito Lopez in 2012 a 154 pounder? I would argue that Jose Cito Lopez was fighting outside of his weight class. And he's exactly the kind of fighter who Saul Alvarez is going to dominate. Do a quick search here on YouTube. Dwyer Alvarez Lopez. You'll see my pre-fight video. And you'll see in that pre-fight video, I talked about how I expected Saul Alvarez to get the knockout in that fight. In part because Alvarez is one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport. And he was fighting a smaller man who was going to be right in front of him. Do you think for a second that Arislandi Lara is going to be right in front of Saul Alvarez the way Jose Cito Lopez was? I don't. Right? Let's talk about the next fight. The Austin Trout fight. Now there are differences of opinion on this fight. Fair enough. Many of you believe that Saul Alvarez actually won the fight. I'm not too concerned with what the judges said about the fight, right? Because I have my own two eyes. But I thought that fight was a very difficult fight for Saul Alvarez. And the CompuBox numbers simply put speak for themselves. I thought Saul Alvarez lost that fight. Right? I thought worse yet. While Saul Alvarez's defense looked a lot better than I thought it would. Right? And while Saul Alvarez, you know, exceeded my expectations in the fight, I thought there are times in that fight where Saul Alvarez could hardly throw punches because he wasn't in shape to go 12 rounds against a opponent with faster hand speed. Right? Saul Alvarez needs to pace himself. His physical fitness isn't there for a guy who's in his early 20s. 
he has to take time off in rounds. At times it feels like I'm watching Bernard Hopkins in terms of the pacing. Now for Hopkins it's forgivable because Hopkins is almost 50 years old. You would expect Bernard Hopkins to take off a minute of let's say a three minute round against a young lion. But for Saul Alvarez in his early 20s let's just say it's disappointing. He's bringing the tempo of a 30 something year old in the ring in his early 20s. Well, I thought Austin Trout won the fight. If you think I'm alone, as I said before, look at the CompuBox numbers. Right? Understand, Canelo scores the only knockdown in the fight. So what I'm saying is that for the rest of the fight, I thought Austin Trout won at least three more rounds than Saul Alvarez. Well, let's get to the next fight. The next fight has a little bit of folklore. The Floyd Mayweather fight. I thought Floyd Mayweather was throwing a shutout. I didn't think the fight was that close. Now, many here feel that I'm a little bit too fond of Floyd Mayweather. Right? Obviously, as I said in another video, I didn't think the Marcus Maidana fight was that close. Right? Mayweather, to me, comes in, figures you out, and then starts to dominate in a way where his fights lack excitement by the ninth round. I thought Mayweather figured out Saul Alvarez early. But yet, one judge in that fight had the fight a draw. Right? I mean, <laughs> let's just say... When they announced the scoring of the Mayweather fight, I thought everyone would have scores that had numbers like 118 and 119 in them. Right? One judge had the fight a draw. Now look at that fight. Look at the first round of that fight. Floyd Mayweather comes out, and he's right in front of Saul Alvarez. He's willing to trade with Saul Alvarez. Think about it. Why did Saul Alvarez do so poorly when Mayweather's right in front of him? It's because Saul Alvarez is a puncher. He's not a great boxer. Let's talk about the Alfredo Angulo fight. Right, I'll just say this. First of all, the Angulo who fights Saul Alvarez is not the Angulo who fights Erislandi Lara. Right, all I can say is I know it's the same person. It wasn't the same fighter. Right, Angulo looks energized and ready for the Lara fight. It looked like Angulo was in a car crash or something before the Saul Alvarez fight, right? He's lethargic in that fight. He's not himself. Now understand, that fight to me is disturbing for another reason, and it's the tempo, it's the pacing. And Gulo's on his front foot trying to walk Alvarez down. Alvarez is landing the harder, cleaner punches, no question about it. None whatsoever. But what I noticed is, even in rounds where Alvarez tags Angulo, somehow, there are portions of those rounds where Alvarez is getting backed up and is up against the ropes. In other words, even Alvarez's dramatic rounds have moments where Alvarez stops fighting. He can't come out and dominate you and blow you out for three minutes of the round. Now that's against a fighter who is right in front of him. Arislandi Lara is going to be moving. 
He's not going to be here. He's going to be here. Right? My point is, if Canelo has a hard time with tempo against opponents who are right in front of him, what is he going to do with a more mobile, more accurate opponent? Factor in, too, that one of Canelo's best punches is his jab. I view him as a Vladimir Klitschko who can go to the body. Right? Here's the difference between he and Klitschko. Klitschko is a dominant athlete. Whatever you see Vladimir Klitschko doing in the ring, understand that Klitschko has a reserve. Right? Klitschko, post Lehman Brewster, can easily go 12 rounds. Right? Klitschko can move when he has to. Saul Alvarez can't. He has the Vladimir Klitschko game without the Vladimir Klitschko athleticism. He has the same great left hook. He has the same stiff left jab. He has the same straight right hand. Right? But he doesn't have the athleticism. So the things that Klitschko does, that his athleticism allows, for example, Alexander Povetkin is trying to rush in. Klitschko's able to grab him. Klitschko has the athleticism to step to the side, stick him under his arm, or to grab him, or to clinch. Right? Another guy, Tony Thompson, is giving Klitschko a hard time in the rematch. Klitschko's able to drop the shell and just open up. And when he opens up, you're seeing hand speed. Now let's talk about Saul Alvarez, right? Alvarez doesn't have that. And let's not forget, Lara's a southpaw. The way the angles match up, Alvarez is going to have a hard time landing that lead jab. Right, so this would be like Klitschko fighting a Tony Thompson. The first fight where Thompson, in my opinion, is winning the fight. Again, I know the judges disagree with me. But I thought Thompson's winning the fight. You should listen to Emmanuel Stewart in Klitschko's corner during that fight. Right? Understand, Tony Thompson doesn't have anywhere near the lateral movement of an Arislandi Lara. Right? So... This is like the Klitschko-Thompson first fight, only imagine Thompson being able to bend a lot more and able to move around the ring a lot more. As I said, I'm expecting Lara to dominate on the scorecards. Now let's talk about Lara's power. I know Juan Manuel Marquez in interviews has said, hey, Lara doesn't have the power to knock out. Saul Alvarez. Somebody tell that to Ronald Hearns, who got stopped in the first round by Lara. Did you know when you look on Lara's record, you're going to see that Lara went through a stretch of four fights where all four fights ended by first round knockout? Of course, Lara has power. He's just been fighting guys like. Carlos Molina, who's practically impossible to knock out, right? And Alfredo Angulo. Now, he gets a stoppage in the fight, but understand, before Angulo quits because his eye's blown up, Angulo's in there getting hit with shot after shot. How do you think Angulo's eye got blown up, right? It's because Angulo has a great chin that Angulo didn't get stopped earlier. Keep in mind too, the Lara Austin Trout fight. I didn't think that fight was that close. But Austin Trout's a hard man to knock out. Even Canelo people will agree with that because he went the distance with Canelo. So my point to you is simply, Canelo's in over his head here. 
I know the casinos have mispriced this. Right? I believe Canelo only has a puncher's chance. The bet I'm recommending, and I have another video online about this fight, is that you take the underdog, the plus 140, Erislandi Lara to win. You don't even have to take him by KO. Just take him to win. And hedge that play with Canelo by KO. Right? Understand. Laura did go down twice in the Angulo fight. Laura did get hit with left hands. And Canelo throws a great left hook. Just look at the Carlos Baldemir fight. Right? So there is a scenario under which Laura can be hurt in fights. But how's Canelo going to corner Laura? Did you see Canelo corner Floyd Mayweather? Right? I, I question that possibility. Right? When Canelo drops Austin Trout, it's in the middle of the ring. Right? Canelo's not on a seek and destroy mission in the Austin Trout fight. If Canelo can't corner Erislandi Lara. How's he going to beat him? Do you really feel here online that he cannot box Lara in the middle of the ring? I don't. If this fight ends up being not a slugfest or a shootout, but a boxing match, Lara, in my opinion, is going to win this by several rounds. Right? Haven't we then accomplices to the hype on Saul Alvarez. I think he's a very good fighter. I do. But I just don't think he's as good as the public does. I'm going with Ferris Landy Lara here. I'm a no man on this fight. I'm a uh, whistleblower here. I'm going with the underdog, Lara, to win the fight, hedged with Canelo by KO. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.